He's risen indeed. Let's just bow our heads together and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we turn to the living and active word of God, we pray that your word would do its work. There's so much fear about, there's so much anxiety. So many people, Lord God, really concerned about what's happening in this world at this time. But you are God who is in control. And the proof of that, Lord, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your son from the dead. Oh Lord, we just bless you for the hope that is found in Jesus today. And because of Jesus, Lord, we do not need to be afraid. Whatever may befall us, Lord God, for those who know and love you, even Lord, if we're called to finish our life here on this earth, it's just a simple transition into eternity where we shall be forever with the Lord when we shall see you face to face. Lord, we love you. We pray for everyone who's watching in this morning, listening in this morning, that you, Lord God, would draw near to them, that the spirit of the living God would give them hope in Jesus Christ this morning. Lord, we ask you, please, let the word of God triumph. Just as Jesus triumphed over the grave, may the word of God triumph this morning as the spirit of the living God carries it into people's hearts and minds. In Jesus' name. For me, Resurrection Sunday is, without any shadow of doubt, the greatest day in the Christian calendar. Now, you know in Shiloh we're not really in the Christian calendars and all of that sort of thing. And every Sunday, I suppose, is just a, a glorious Sunday. But if you're going to follow a calendar, then Resurrection Sunday is, without any doubt, the most exciting Sunday for me in the calendar. And our songs this, mo this morning <clears throat> are to be focused on the wonderful truth that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. There's no doubt about this. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Now, if you have any doubt about that, you have got to answer a simple question this morning. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, where did his body go? The song that we sang this morning because he lives, was written by Gloria Gaither. Now, before anybody jumps up on the table and starts singing, I will survive, and trust me, I hope as far as these days go, we all will survive, but it was not Gloria Gaynor. It was written, because he lives, was written by Gloria Gaither from the famous family of gospel singers. <clears throat> and she said that she wrote this song during a time of great upheaval in the world. Hear that? She wrote this song during a time of great upheaval in the world when there was a lot of tension about events unfolding both nationally and internationally. In fact, it was a very, very difficult time for Gloria and her family as they encountered problem after problem after problem. And all of this was happening while Gloria was heavily pregnant with her third child. Listen to what Gloria said. <clears throat> it was on New Year's Eve that I sat alone thinking about the world, our country, and our family problems, and about our baby yet unborn. Who in their right mind would bring a child into a world like this? The world is so evil. Influences beyond our control are so strong. What will happen to this child? And then she said, I can't, I can't quite explain what happened. But suddenly I felt released from it all. The panic I felt inside was gently dispelled by a reassuring presence that engulfed my life and drew my attention. Gradually the fear left and joy began to return. I knew I could have my baby and face the future with optimism and trust. It was the resurrection affirming itself in our lives once again. It was life conquering death in the regularity of my day. And from this experience, Gloria Gaither wrote the song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Does any of this sound remotely 
familiar this morning? During a time of great upheaval in the world, a time such as this with COVID-19 spread to every nation of the world. A lot of tension about events unfolding both nationally and internationally. Problems in the world, in the country, problems in our own families, influences beyond our control. So much evil in the world. Who in their right mind would bring a child into this world? God the Father did. He brought his child, Jesus, into this world so full of evil so that people could have life forevermore. So much evil in the world. Anxiety and panic setting into people's hearts and minds. You're just walking about, getting about your business. Even in the lockdown, you're just doing what you have to do. You're trying to get on with things as best as possible. And then just suddenly an anxiety comes over you. It almost overwhelms you. You get a cough. You get a wee bit of fever. And you think, oh my goodness, the party's over. You know, this week a group of cross-party Westminster MPs urged the government to boost mental health support. Why do we have to wait until there is a crisis such as this without getting our priorities right? Should we not have, from the outset, been given support to our nurses, to our doctors, to the NHS staff, to the care workers, to the mental health teams? But this week, this group of MPs, they urged the government to boost mental health support to prevent the coronavirus crisis having a serious impact on people's well-being. With the restrictions on daily life set to continue for the foreseeable future, the British government was asked to launch a publicity campaign to signpost help and to pour cash into mental health charities offering support. A mental health hotline is set up for frontline NHS workers dealing with the crisis. Imagine working in the caring environment such as the health service at this time, faced with death after death after death. And we have to set up an emergency hotline to help them in their need. Lockdown measures to curb the spread of COVID-19 have, have left some people totally isolated. Anxiety about the pandemic is compounded by stresses over people's uh, personal well-being, over their health, of, the health of our loved ones, and the impact perhaps of the crisis on our livelihoods. A time of great upheaval in the world. Tension about events nationally and internationally. Problems in the world, in the country, and in the family. Influences beyond our control. So much evil going on. Who in their right mind would bring a child into this world? Anxiety and panic setting in. The word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Hear it again, written by the wisest man that ever lived, King Solomon. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. King David himself, if he was writing it in our language, would say this, in other words, people, We've been there before. People have been through it before and have come out the other side. And because God is in control, we too shall come through this and out the other side. King David of Israel constantly, constantly faced the symptoms of our sin-cursed world. And all that I'm telling you this morning, all that I'm reading out here, are the symptoms of a sin-cursed world. And David himself faced them throughout his life. He knew what upheaval meant in the world. He knew what national and international tensions could do. He knew what problems there were in the world, in his own country and in his family, when even his own children were conspiring to kill him. 
He knew that there were influences beyond his control. He knew that there was so much evil in this world. He too may have thought time after time, who in their right mind would bring a child into this world? Anxiety and panic without any doubt set in at times into King David's life. But David had a remedy for all of this. And was inspired, thank God, he was inspired by the Lord to write it down. So that others, just like me and just like you watching in this morning, so that we who face similar circumstances might find help and support. He writes these words in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years, as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Faced with his own personal crises, when his heart and his mind often was overwhelmed with anxiety and fear, David learned, he learned to call out to God and to ask God for help. He knew that there was one. He knew there was one in whom he could trust. There was a rock, a sure foundation that he could rely on. One who could lift him up above the worry of the waves of fear that were overwhelming him and the anxiety that was overwhelming him. There was one that he could trust in. One who was the rock upon which he could build. I wonder this morning, do you know that rock? Do you know Jesus as the rock of your salvation? Because Jesus and Jesus alone is the one who can lift you up to that higher place above the waves of fear and anxiety when crisis after crisis after crisis comes into your world. David found the Lord to be a shelter from the storm, a strong, safe, Place from all of his enemies. In the Lord, David could rest secure, be at peace, and know that God would preserve him. Gloria Gator allowed the difficulties that she encountered, the problems she saw and experienced, to begin to overwhelm her to the point that she questioned why anyone would bring a child into this world. And then, out of his amazing grace, the Lord overwhelmed Gloria with his loving presence and he dispelled all her fears. Suddenly, she had a new sense of hope and purpose in life. She knew that she could have her baby and face the future with optimism and trust. Gloria des describes it in this way. It was the resurrection affirming itself in our lives once again. It was life conquering death in the regularity of my day. In other words, because Jesus is alive because Jesus is in control of all things it meant that there was something worth living for there was still purpose there was still meaning in life is it any wonder she wrote because he lives I can face tomorrow 
because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds a future, and life is worth living just because he lives. Sing it with me this morning if you believe this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future and life is worth living just because he lives. Look, let me say to everyone watching and listening today, this is why Resurrection Sunday is so special. It is so meaningful to me, so meaningful to Christians right across the world because it reminds me, it reminds us that Jesus, our Savior, lives. Hallelujah! Jesus, our Savior, is alive. He loved us and he came into this world to pay the price for this, for our sin, by dying on our behalf. Oh Lord, this same Jesus is risen from the dead. This same Jesus is alive. And he has conquered Satan, sin and death for you and for me. This same Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. This same Jesus is the Lord who is in control of all things, even the coronavirus. This same Jesus is in control of whatever problems you're encountering today, whatever storms you're facing in life. This same Jesus is in control of all of these things. This same Jesus is the rock, the sure foundation upon which we can build our lives. This same Jesus says to you today, do not let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You believe in God. Believe also in me. This same Jesus speaks these words to you in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of your grief, in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your crises. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be Afraid. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Whatever you're facing today, whatever crisis aims to overwhelm you, know this. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. On this Resurrection Sunday, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be overwhelmed with anxiety and fear about what is going on in the world, in your country or in your family. Don't allow your mind or thoughts to be influenced by negativity. Know with absolute certainty, Jesus loves you and Jesus has a plan and a purpose for you. All who humbly confess their sin, that means agree with God that they are a sinner. All who humbly confess their sin, repent, that just simply means turn around from living your life your way, turn away from your sin. All who humbly confess their sin, repent and trust in Jesus, can take a hold of this wonderful, powerful truth because he lives, I can face tomorrow. With Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, you too can face the future with optimism and trust. And this promise is for you and for your household if you accept the risen Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour today. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, again, we just want to thank you for Jesus. Thank you that you sent your beloved Son into this world to die upon a cross to pay the price for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. Thank you that he went to that cross willingly because of his love for you and because of his love for us. He hung and bled and died to take away our sin. Thank you that the grave could not hold him. Thank you that death has been conquered because he is risen again from the dead. Thank you that Jesus has been exalted, given the name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so today we confess that truth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is our risen Saviour. Lord, may the truth of your word penetrate hearts and minds today. You know the deepest, deepest need of every person who's listening in this morning. You know, Lord God, the yearnings of people's souls. You know the fears, the anxieties, the overwhelming worry, Lord God, that they're experiencing. Even grief, Lord God, that is tearing people's hearts. Lord, may you please grant that the Spirit of the living God, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, move upon people's hearts and minds today and grant them your overwhelming peace. May those who do not know Jesus as Lord and Saviour, may they be drawn by the power of your Spirit to him, to have faith in him and to celebrate the risen, conquering King. We thank you, Jesus, that because you live, we can face tomorrow, whatever that might bring, because our hope is in you, the risen, conquering King.